In this video we are going to have a look at the Panasonic Lumix 2470 f2.8 lens. Kia ora, good morning everyone, Richard Wong here. When Panasonic released the S1 and S1R earlier this year, they released it with three different lenses, the 51.4, the 24105F4 and also the 7200F4. I remember a lot of people were complaining and saying, well, Panasonic, you released two professional cameras and how come you're only releasing two F4 zoom lenses? And where are the F2.8 zoom lenses? If you are one of the people that were complaining, now we have the first f2.8 zoom lens from Panasonic. This is the 2470 f2.8 lens. And I have been doing quite a bit of testing on both the S1R and the S1H testing the performance when shooting photos and video. So as usual, let's talk about the build quality and the body design first. The 2470 f2.8 lens, the body design the finish is quite similar to the 24105 f4 lens it feels a little bit more solid than the 24105 f4 lens maybe just because of the size and also the weight this lens feel a little bit more heavier than the 24105 f4 lens unlike the 50 f1.4 lens which has an aperture ring at the top of the lens this one doesn't have an aperture ring, but you do have the focus ring, which you can put it back and then it will turn into a manual focus ring. The focus ring itself feels very smooth. And when you turn it to the limit, then there's like a, a soft stop at the end. So you will feel that it reached the end of the focus range, but you can still keep turning the ring if you want to. This is a fantastic design, especially the lens is designed for both photographer and videographer. So I guess for a lot of videographer, you would turn it to the manual focus mode so that you can do precise manual focus yourself. While I really like this autofocus manual focus clutch design, and I think it's fantastic, especially for a videographer who will probably do quite a bit of manual focus so that they can control the focus precisely. I do have a little problem is uh, sometimes when I take the camera out from the camera bag and when I try to start take some photos, I notice that the camera actually is in manual focus mode. And so my first reaction is to look at the back of the camera and check the switch here. And I see, okay, it is still in um, single autofocus, which is normally what I use when I'm taking photos. So how come is in manual focus mode? So after a little while there, I noticed that actually it's because the focus ring got um, somehow bumped into the manual focus position even though um, I didn't intentionally do that, I left it in the autofocus position. Yeah, as soon as I realized that, then I push it back to the autofocus position and so everything would work normally. And actually, to be fair, this is not a problem of this lens itself. I remember when I was reviewing the Olympus F1.2 lenses for the Micro Four Thirds camera, I have exactly the same problem quite often when I pull the camera out from the camera back. Quite often, the focus ring got bump into manual focus position without I realizing that. Just be careful in general when you're using any lens that has this kind of uh, autofocus manual focus clutch design. If you notice the camera is in manual focus mode, it's quite likely it's just because you accidentally bump the focus ring into manual focus position. The lens is fully weather sealed. So while I didn't have a chance to test this lens under any bad weather condition, from my previous experience with the other Panasonic lens that has weather seal, you really shouldn't have to worry too much if you have to use this lens under bad weather condition. This is not a small lens at all. Look at the size of the lens. And maybe because of that, um, Panasonic doesn't want to increase the size of this lens anymore. Or maybe because Panasonic is just very confident with the in-body image stabilizer technology. This lens doesn't have any optical image stabilizer built-in. So you do have to rely on your camera body's in-body image stabilizer. And if you're using the S1, S1H or S1R, then it shouldn't be a problem at all because with all these free cameras they all have a fantastic in-body image stabilizer but it will be quite interesting to see the future l body from Leica and especially from Sigma to see if their body have any decent 
in body image stabilizer built in. The front element wouldn't move or rotate when you are changing the focus, but if you are changing the focal length when you change from 24 to 70, then the lens would start to extrude a little bit. So this is probably not a problem for a photographer, but for a videographer, there may be a little bit of problem, which I will talk about later on in this review. When I'm taking photo using the single autofocus mode, the autofocus speed is lightening fast and there's almost no hunting at all. When I'm shooting video in continuous autofocus mode, the autofocus speed is also pretty decent if I'm shooting at one of the higher frame rate at 60 frames per second or 120 frames per second, the autofocus speed is actually pretty decent. Occasionally, I do notice there is a little bit of hunting when the focus is changed from very far to very close or vice versa, but it only happens very occasionally with the S1H with the 1.0 firmware. Okay, now let's start talk about the image quality and as usual, let's start with the image sharpness first. For most of the image quality tests, I tested with the 47 megapixel S1 out. So let's start look at the center sharpness first. The 2470 f2.8 center sharpness is excellent. At f2.8, the maximum aperture, the center sharpness is fantastic from 24mm all the way to 70mm. Stop down the lens to f4 or f5.6 will only marginally improve the image sharpness because at f2.8 the image sharpness is fantastic already. Okay, now let's look at the corner sharpness. Um, at the wide end 24mm, at f2.8 the corner is slightly soft, so you could improve the image sharpness a bit when you stop down to f4 or f5.6. But when you increase the focal length from 15 mil onward, even at the maximum aperture f2.8, the corner sharpness is already fantastic. So even if you stop down to f4 or 5.6, there really isn't much improvement in terms of corner sharpness. Lens flare and ghosting are both very well controlled. Even when I'm shooting into the sun or into a bright object after dark, the amount of lens flare and ghosting are both at very minimum level. Distortion control is fantastic. Even when I was looking at my brick wall test photo that I shot from 24mm all the way to 17mm, there is virtually no distortion at all. In terms of chromatic aberration, when I shot some test photo using the S1R and I was shooting at some of the highest possible contrast scene at maximum aperture, I can see a little bit of color fringing, but it is at a very minimum level. So that was with my extreme test photo. And when I look at the other real world photo that I shot over the last week or two, I see virtually no chromatic aberration at all. When it comes to the vignetting at the wide end 24mm focal length, at f2.8 there is some noticeable vignetting. Stop down to f4 would greatly reduce vignetting and at f5.6 then there is virtually no vignetting. At 15mm focal length there is very minimal amount of vignetting at the maximum aperture f2.8 and once I stop down to f4 then there is virtually no vignetting. And when I shoot at the tail end of the lens, which is 17mm, at the maximum aperture f2.8, the vignetting is quite similar to uh, what I see at 15mm, but maybe a tiny bit more. And when I stop down to f4, then once again, vignetting is virtually not visible. The bokeh looks very nice, very smooth. And when I stop down the lens, it still remain pretty round. That's pretty much exactly what I would expect from a high quality f2.8 standard zoom lens. For videographers who is using or planning to use a Panasonic S series camera, I think this 2470 f2.8 lens would be a very popular choice because of its 24 to 70 focal length, which is very versatile focal length, the constant f2.8 aperture, and because it also has a very smooth and very quiet autofocus system, which would be great for a videographer who would use autofocus when they are shooting video. And for a videographer who like to shoot with many focus, you can just pull this uh, focus ring back and then you can do precise many focus. 
and focus breathing seems to be quite well controlled. Even when I change the focus distance from very close to infinity, the amount of focus breathing is not serious at all. When I was testing this lens with the S1H with my filmmaker friend Peter, oh by the way, go check out his YouTube channel, he makes some really awesome music video. We had a big problem when we were testing it with his Zhiyun Crane 2. The real founder on the S series camera at the back, it extrudes quite a bit and also because it's quite a big camera. So after he has balanced the camera on the gimbal, when um, he tried to change the shooting position from a normal to a low angle. This part actually would hit the gimbal, so the camera actually couldn't go down to shoot in the low angle position. So then we removed the lens hood, which allowed us to move the camera a little bit more front on the gimbal while keep it still balanced. And that almost managed to make it clear the gimbal arm, but we still hit it a little bit. So in the end, what we did is that we removed the eye cup from the real founder and that gives us a little bit more clearance and that is just enough for the camera to clear the arm of the gimbal. So with the Zhiyun Crane 2, we can now finally change the camera position from the normal to a low angle shooting position. Another little problem we had is that when you are changing the focal length, you see that the front of the lens would extrude a little bit so that would upset the balance of the gimbal a little bit um, if your gimbal is strong enough then that wouldn't be a problem at all but if your gimbal's motor is not very strong and could barely handle the weight of the camera and the lens together then you may have to balance the gimbal every time you change the focal length of the lens but apart from these two little issues, we found the lens work really well when shooting video and it can create some really beautiful video footage. The build quality of the lens is very good. I love this autofocus manual focus crush design. The autofocus performance is also very good, very fast, very smooth, very quiet. And in terms of the image quality, it is just as good as any of the best 2470 f2.8 lens in the market right now. I think it's fair to say that the Elman lens lineup is still far from complete. There's obviously a lot of work that Panasonic and the Elman Alliance partners still have to do um, to create a complete Elman system that can satisfy all the professional user and also the non-professional users out there. But seeing Panasonic releasing so many solid products like this 2470 f2.8 and also the S1H within such a short period of time, I feel really great about the future of this Elman system. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you have any question about the 2470 f2.8 lens, feel free to drop a comment below. Thanks again for watching this video and I'll see you in my next video.